Well, welcome back to Rob Sandstrom Designs YouTube channel. What I'm going to do in this uh, video is introduce another project, a slightly different project from some of my earlier ones with epoxy and so forth. This one is something that's been pretty popular and I volunteered to do for the San Diego Fine Woodworker Association for their holiday gift sale. So if you want to know how to make a bottle opener, I'm going to make this bottle opener right here, this dog paw. And you can design this in a number of different ways. The way I designed it was so that the paw pads were on the front and I put a little scribe in there to make it easier for me to paint. And then we have the bottle hardware that we stick inside of there. And then I left the back wide open for anybody to laser engrave a saying, a logo or something else on it. So we're gonna get busy real quick here on producing this in VCarve Pro. Uh, walking you through the process of how I did that with measurements and everything else so that you can actually make one of these yourself if you want to or take the idea and make something else. For example, I also made a guitar bottle opener. Same concept, magnets and uh, bottle opener. These are magnets so that we can stick it to the refrigerator. I hope uh, this helps some of you uh, pick up a little project. I'm gonna start releasing uh, what I'll call simple projects that don't take a whole lot to make happen and get done. This is cheap poplar that I'm using. You can use walnut or anything else. And oh, by the way, if you listen all the way through and you make it to a certain point in the video, I'm going to give you a word that you can put in and I will actually send you these files if you send me an email and ask for it. So with that, let's get into the actual design video and then we'll move from that into the cutting video of the actual bottle openers. So I'm gonna create a new job. I'm gonna make this 12 by 12 by 0.75 inches. I'm going to do it on the surface and at first when I'm setting it up to keep everything centered I'm going to go ahead and uh, put the center access and then I'll build it and later change that. So the first thing I need to do is build the actual insert piece and I measured that earlier. Okay let's measure the diameter of this bottle opener. 39.75 right there about 30 inside here 27 millimeters or so 14 to 15 about 14 millimeters First thing I need to do is build the insert piece. I'm going to draw a circle and I'm going to make that circle here in the center arbitrarily for now. And the diameter I want in inches, but I measured it in millimeters. So I'm going to take 40, which is the millimeters I wanted, times I equal, and that's the equivalent uh, in inches. And I'll hit apply. Now let me blow this up a little bit. And I know that the actual in the center, these are centered, that there's 30 uh, millimeters between two centers. So I'm going to go ahead and use the guides. So I'll pull a guide out here. And I'm going to take and go relative to that guide 15 millimeters but I've got to put times I equals 0 0.59005 and we'll create a new guide and now on the other side I'm going to go minus that same amount and I'm going to create a new guide so now I have a guide that would actually measure 30 millimeters apart from the center, which is where the holes will be. So now that I've got this circle and these guidelines, uh, the two screws holes that are going to go in there would go on these guidelines right here. So I'm going to go ahead and put two circles there. I want snapping on, snap right here to the corner, and I want that to be 0.0625 inches, 0.0625 inches. It's and that happens to be 1 16th of an inch. Or if I wanted to, I could have used the math function 
and could have said 1 comma 16 equal and that would have given me the diameter there and then hit close another way is I could have done the first one so the other thing I could have done is I could have simply taken and marked this one and I could have done the flip horizontal about job center right here create a mirrored copy and then they would have been exactly the same if you didn't any of those would have worked just fine once again, I'm just building the metal insert right now. The next thing I need to do is be able to make the where the bottle cap goes in to open it. And so that's going to be an oblong kind of shape. And based on my measurements, let's put this in the serial. I'm going to make that about 0.85 by 1.25 inches roughly apply and that's how that's going to look hit close and now what we have is our bottle opener insert and so I'm going to group this together at the moment I'll ungroup it later and I'm going to call this move this to a new layer called bottle opener insert So now when I bring in my pictures and whatever else I do, this is going to be the insert that has to fit into whatever design I come up with. Now that we have the bottle opener insert that we need to fit in there, we can get rid of these guides. I'll just pull them off here. And the next thing we got to do is decide what kind of design we're going to want. And let me do a the uh, puppy paw. I went previously and got a image of a puppy paw. Here it is, dog paw, PNG, hit open. So now we've got our dog paw in there. First we want to do is just get everything converted. So I'm going to hide the bottle opener. And the first thing I want to do is turn this into vectors. So I'm going to use the bitmap trace tool, color, and I'm going to select the colors I want to trace by clicking on them right on the drawing. And you can see this made this part red. If I hit preview, you can see where the black lines are. Hit apply. And so now if I turn off the bitmap, you can see where it's traced that part of the paw. Now I do want to have the pads because I'm gonna play around a little bit with some shading and stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and put the pads on here and we'll use those later. So to get the pads, I need to go back and do another trace. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just click on this color of the paws. And you can see now that it's traced that section. Hit preview. And it looks good. Hit apply. Hit close. And then we're going to go ahead and turn off the bitmap for a second. And the next thing I want to do, looks like I lost it. So the next thing I want to do is do the pause section. So we're going to click on the bitmap. We're going to go ahead and do the tracing one more time. And I'm going to go ahead and trace this section right here. Hit a preview. I can see the lines there. Hit apply hit close. So now when I turn off the bitmap you can see I have the outline, the paws, and the little paw pads and that's what I want. So now that I have all of that you'll notice that it's grouped for the outline of the paw because that was the first one and then you see the pads themselves are grouped in a different group. What I want to do at this time is I want to group it all together, group objects, because I'm going to want to turn those so that the orientation makes it easier for me. So I double click, I'm grabbing the corner, I'm turning it around to where it's almost 90, it doesn't have to be perfect, it's just from a visual perspective what makes it easier for me to deal with. I'm then going to go ahead and take this grouping and I'm going to align that to the center of the material. So now that's in the very center of the material, so I'm keeping everything centered. Now I'm going to bring back on by this 
I want to change this to a layer called paw print. And now that I have those two layers, I can bring back the layer for the bottle opener insert. And I'm going to color that layer a little bit different. On the bottle opener insert, I want to make that layer stand out. So I'm going to make that layer color. Um, let's make that a dark blue. Okay, so now that's the bottle opener insert. And I had thought I had grouped that before, but I saw that when I just worked with it, it wasn't grouped. So I'm going to go ahead and group that for a second, just to make it easier to work with. So now I have that grouped. I have the other one grouped. And so now what I want to do is I want to center that bottle opener insert into the center of my paw. So instead of aligning material, I'm going to align to section. And so now that is in the center of the paw. And I don't want it there. I want a little more meat around it to be able to put screws and so forth in it. So I think that's a little better location right there for when I go to carve it. Hit close. And the other thing is these screws, if you look at the metal insert, those are the locations of where the paw is going to actually the bottle opener part is going to be. So I'm going to need to turn these 90 degrees so I can come over here, rotate 90. Is one way I can do it. Let me let me undo that. The other way I could have done it is instead of doing that is clicking on this and using the nine key. And nine key will turn it 45 degrees with each time you hit it. So now I can see that it's looking a little busy. So let me take these pads and I'm going to take the bottle opener insert off. I'm going to ungroup these objects and now I'm going to group the pads themselves which they already are grouped and I'm going to move those to a layer called and I want to color those let's color those a dark brown hit OK so now those are my paw pads this here is my I want to ungroup that and the first thing I want to do is take the outside, which is going to be my profile cut. And I want to change that, change that to a paw print border. Okay. And let's turn off this. Turn off the pads and you can see that's the paw print border. That's actually what we're going to cut out when we cut the bottle opener. Then the next thing I want to do is I want to take the rest of the, and I want to take, I want to take these areas here, and I want to move those to a layer called claws. And let me put those claws a different color. I'm going to do those a light tan. And maybe I'll use a different color. That's kind of hard to see. So let's make those an orange. How's that? So now what we have if we turn on everything is we've got the bottle opener insert. We have the paw pads. And we have the paw print border. So we have pretty much everything we need to uh, make this bottle opener now. One thing we don't need is, I'm just going to hide this, I'm going to call, move this to a layer called uh, layer 1, and that's the only thing that's on there. And I don't think I'm going to need that at all, so I'm not going to do anything with that right now, I'm just going to leave it hidden. This paw pad, I'm going to move, I'm going to ungroup these paws
and I'm going to move this one to layer one because I don't think I'm going to use that either. And layer one's not showing. So now all I have are these marks, and I've got those marks because I'm either going to laser or I'm going to V carve or engrave that part of the design. So let's see what the size of this is at this time. The size of this project is right now at 3.45 inches by 3.7 inches. And that seems like it might be just a little big for a bottle opener. So let's resize this and we're going to keep everything. Now notice I am not messing with this because this bottle opener has to stay the same size. That's the insert. That's the metal piece that we're going to put in there. See what a three does here. So that makes it three inches by three inches, which is probably a pretty good size. We've got room here and for the bottle uh, insert, we've got our paw prints. I think everything looks pretty good. Hit close. And now we can set up the tool pass for this. The one thing I do want to look at is to make sure that I don't have any real sharp corners here on the on the claws and it doesn't look like I do. Let's take a look at the number of nodes. That's pretty congested. So let's try to reduce the nodes here. So the first thing we want to do is select the paw print border and see how many nodes are in there. So we go to the node mode. You can hit N or go to that mode. Then we're going to go to Curve Fit. We're on the paw print border level, which is what this is. I want to use Bezier curves is what I usually like to do. I don't need to keep any sharp corners here. And I'm going to replace the selected vectors. I hit Preview. And this is what it's, the new vector is going to look like. I think that looks pretty good. I'm hit OK. The next ones that I want to do, let's test these. They're not too bad. Let's do a simplification though and see what it can do. Bezier curves, 0.01, replace preview. Yes, and it did reduce the number of nodes, so I hit OK. On the circle, we should be okay with this. And I'm going to ungroup this for a second. I'm going to hit nodes. We don't have excessive nodes here, so we're good with that. And we've pretty much simplified all the nodes. Let's just check the claws here real quick. Okay, that cleaned them up a little bit. Hit OK. And the reason we're doing all that, recall, is to try to make the tool pass simpler and not take as much time. So now one thing I did wrong, and uh, I'll leave that in the video so you can see it, is when I was working on each of these and simplifying the nodes and replacing them, I had paw print border selected. So what happened is, Everything that I worked on, when I replaced it, went to the layer that I had selected, which was paw print border. So now I need to go back and put these on the layers that I want them. So I'm selecting each of these pads. And I'm going to move those to paw pads. And I'm going to have to select each of these. In fact, I can just probably go right across here because... I'm going to now put those into the claws. And now everything is back on their regular expected areas. And what that allows us to do then is set up our tool pass using layers. Now that we have our vectors all set up on the right layers, it's time to set up the tool pass. So we'll go about doing that right now. First tool path we want to set up. And I'm going to separate out this into a couple different um, layers. So I'm going to say this, i got to ungroup them, hit U for ungroup. And this one I'm going to change to a letter that's uh, uh, 
layer that says insert recess. Hit OK. And this one, I'm going to move to a layer. You'll see why I'm doing this in a second. Is cap pocket. And I'll make that a, let's say, I'll make that one blue. Hit OK. And this one is that I'm going to take this one and this one. And I'm going to move those to a layer. Oops. Move to layer called fasteners. There's what's going to hold down the bottle cap. First toolpath I'm going to set up is a recess for this bottle cap to fit into. So it's going to be a pocket toolpath. I'm going to use a one, uh, one eighth inch bit and the cut depth three millimeters. So I'm going to hit three times I equals 0.11811 inches. Everything else looks fine. Offset toolpath is fine. I don't need a plunge. Selector. This is why I like to put them into layers. I'm going to select the insert recess, hit close, hit calculate, and I'm just going to say insert recess, hit calculate. The next one that I'm going to set up, go back over here. We'll turn that one off for a second. The next thing I want to set up is the actual cap insert. I'm going to set that up also as a pocket. Put the depth of the recess as a starting point. Put that in there. And then I'm going to go ahead and whatever that recess is, I'm going to minus that same value. Hit equal. And now the total depth will be 0.5 inches. Hit calculate. Hit close. And then the next thing that I can do is I'm going to do the cutout profile. And so I'm going to hit profile. And I'm going to go through the thickness of the material. So Z or T, either one will work. I'm going to use that compression bit. I'm going to go on the outside right. I'm going to hold the material down with a blue sided tape or with a double tape, whichever I decide to use when I get out there. So I'm not going to put any tabs on it. The first pass, let's take a look, is 0.125, which is below the upcut part of my bit. So that works just fine. I'm not going to add a ramp because I want it to go down immediately past the upcut. I'm going to select the paw print border associated hit close hit calculate i know it's going to go through that's what i want it to do and the last thing that i'm going to add for the basic area if you want to have a little pilot hole so let's take a look and we're going to use a pecking drill path and we're going to go down remember the recess was 0.1181 and we're going to go down 0.3 inches. I'm going to use a 16th inch bit and I'm going to use a pecking tool path and I'm going to hit screws or let's say fasteners. This is an optional step. Hit selector, associate with, fasteners, hit close, hit calculate. Now if you're going to actually do the fasteners, those should be before you actually cut out the profile. Let me rename this. So that is our basic bottle opener that the insert will fit into and we can cut it out using this toolpath. Preview all toolpaths. You can see that we've got a couple pilot holes to, for the screws. We've got a deeper hole for the cap actually to fit into and a recess for the bottle opener insert. And then we have the basic shape of the paw. And so that's what the bottom will look like. And then, of course, if you flipped it over, the top would look like this. And everything's set to go ahead and cut that if you don't want to do anything fancy with it. Now, let's say that you did want to put a little diagram on here of the paw prints and others. One way to do that would be to go ahead and use a V-bit to do that. So let me show you what I mean by that. If you wanted to put just a light design there, you could go ahead and use a V-carved toolpath. And you would start at zero, and you wouldn't want to go very deep. So I would say the most I'd want to go is probably 0.05. Uh, looks good, because all I'm going to do is shade it. Now, if I'm using my laser, I would do all this with a laser. But if I'm doing it all on my CNC, I would just engrave it 
say 0.05 deep. I'm going to select a V bit from my tools. I'm going to use a 30 degree. Select that. A clearance bit. We're going to go ahead and keep that 1 8 inch bit since it's already going to be in the uh, collet. Select one here. That bit right there. Hit select. Remove. Selectors. We want to select the paw pads and the claws and not the fasteners. Hit associate. Hit close. Hit calculate. And I'm going to give that a toolpath color just so we can see what I mean by separating it out. And hit preview visible. And we'll give that a toolpath color. Same one. Preview visible. And if we wanted to then carve just a little decoration in there that we could then paint. Basically get a score so we could paint it. We would have that for our actual bottle opener. Now clearly if we were going to add that decoration we'd have to also do that before we do the profile cut. So now we're at a point where we've got all the tool paths set up the, uh, that we want to use to cut this thing out. The next thing I want to do is arrange the tool paths in the most efficient process. So the first thing I want to do is uh, look at which tool paths are which. So if we look here at this V-carved tool path down in the bottom. Remember that's a 30 degree V-bit. So I'm going to take and put that tool path at the top. Simply move that up to the top. And then the next tool path after that, uh, if we're going to switch, switch bits, would probably be the um, fasteners tool path. And I'm still trying to decide whether I'm going to use that. Remember, that is a 1 16th inch end mill. This is the 30 degree V-bit, 1 16th inch end mill. And the rest are all 1 8th inch end mills. So from that, then, the next thing I would do after the fastener, just so I can get it out of the way, is the feet carved tool path, which is the clearance tool path for these paws to make it easier to paint these. Next thing I would do is the insert recess, then the cap pocket. So the insert recess is this portion right here. The cap pocket is right here, and this is the fasteners. And based on some previous experience, I don't think I'll actually drill those, but I'm going to keep them in the tool path in case I change my mind later, uh, get a smaller bit or something else. The 1 16th inch bit, based on the screws I'm using, uh, they don't seat real tight. I think it's too big of a pilot hole, so I'm not going to put them in when I cut this. But I'm going to leave them in the file in case I decide to change screws or get different screws in the future. And then the last tool path, so we've got the insert, the cap pocket, this is what I call the cap pocket. And then the last one is the actual paw profile. So let's see what that looks like. Let's reset this. So when I cut it, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the V-bit. And we'll preview, that. we'll preview that. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm not going to do the fasteners. But I'm going to take this tool path, this tool path, and this tool path. And I'm actually going to cut those all at the same time using the same bit, which is 1 8 inch end mill. Let's preview those. So when we're done, we'll have this on the, uh, the cut. And then the last thing I'm going to do is cut out the profile cut. And let's take a look at that. Oh, there's one other thing I need to do. I need to add a couple of magnets in here. So let me do that at this time. The magnets I want to add, let me take this to the 2D preview. Let me take and put a guideline so they're about at the same spot right here. And I'm going to put a circle. And I pre-measured the magnets using my uh, magnet and dowel jig. I'll show that here in the video up in one of the corners. Uh, they're going to be 8 millimeters magnets. So 8 times I equals... So that's what I was doing was taking 8 millimeters times I, which gives me the equivalent inches, 0.31496. And I'm going to create that circle right here between these paws. And I think I will close. I will actually move that down just a little bit. Let me turn snapping off. And I'm going to move this guide slightly down so it snaps. Let me put snapping back on. 
So it'll snap right there to the center of that circle. And I'm going to go ahead and use the flip horizontal tool about job center. Remember everything's centered, so I'm going to create a mirrored copy. Flip horizontal, and that gives me the other magnet right there. I'm going to take this one and this one, and I'm going to move these to a layer. New layer called magnets. I'll go ahead and close this, take this guide away, and I'm going to move this paw print just slightly out of the way of the magnet. Move this paw print slightly out of the way of the magnet. Here we go. Move this paw print slightly up over here. And now I have the paw prints that I'm going to paint along with the magnets. And the only thing I need to do is add the toolpath for the magnets. And I'll do that by using a pocket toolpath. And that pocket toolpath I want to make 0.1 inches deep. The 1 8 tool bit will work just fine. And I'm going to select the magnets, hit close, hit calculate, and now we have these magnets. And just so we can see them better, I'll give them a color of yellow, let's say. And we'll preview that. All right, you can see where the magnets are. Let, let's recalculate the V-carve. We I hit recalculate visible. Hit OK. And now let's reset preview and let's just preview the whole, all the toolpaths. And you can see that the pop pads are outside the magnet. So now we have the magnets and everything else. And the one thing I want to do is I want to rename this as magnets. And I need to move that up. And I'll put that right after I finish the pause. Insert, and now we have the toolpath with the most efficient toolpath changes. Now we're finished with the actual design and the toolpath designation, so we're able to save these to a USB and take them to the CNC to actually cut this project out. Save the file. Okay, we finished the design in the Vectric software, and now I'm just going to do a real quick uh, video of how this thing cut. Let me set up the cut process. Remember, we started with a V-bit, and then we moved on to an eighth-inch bit to cut the rest of the uh, project. What I want to point out is how simple this was to cut. The other thing I'm going to point out is, if you look at this uh, where I cut it, I cut it on a piece of material, a piece of poplar, that it already had another cut done on it for another bottle opener that I made that was a guitar shape. And so don't get confused by the fact that when I give you the software demo, I don't show that guitar in there. With that, let's go ahead and cut this thing. Popping this paw out, that double-sided tape held muy bueno, very good. Let's take a look at what the final result looks like as I pull this thing out. So this is the uh, summary of uh, the video. We've gone through all of the design. We went through the actual cutting and I hope you picked up a thing or two. My, my goal is to uh, help people with the Vectric software and also I like to create a project that somebody else can make if they want. 
This file can be yours for free if you made it to this point in the video simply by putting into my comment section. All you have to do is make a comment, say pet paw. That's right, P-E-T-P-A-W. Say if you start your comment with pet paw and let me know you want the file, then uh, I will uh, send it to you if you send it to me at my email, robsandstromdesigns at gmail.com. robsandstromdesigns at gmail.com. I do hope you picked up a thing or two during the tutorial. It's always my pleasure to present these little uh, lesson tutorials and projects. And I look forward to producing more projects in the future. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel and you want to hear about those projects, make sure you subscribe. Also, if you think it's worth, if you think I deserve, also, if you think I deserve it, please give me a like with a thumbs up and a comment, likes and comments. And sharing my videos always helps get me into the process so that my videos get wider distribution. With that, have a great day until we meet again in this medium. Yeah.